Conversations about socializing contexts. 1. Meeting friends for coffee. A casual catch-up session over a cup of joe is a popular way to socialize with friends. 2 friends, Nadia and Pierre, bump into each other on the street. They are happy to meet, so they decide to take a coffee. 3. Hi Pierre. Hi Nadia. Fancy seeing you here. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Just out for a walk. What about you? Me too, actually. Beautiful day, isn't it? Absolutely. Listen, are you free for coffee sometime? I'd love to catch up. Coffee sounds great. How about right now? There's a nice cafe just around the corner. Perfect. Let's go. At the cafe. Hmm, what should I get? They have so many choices. Maybe a cappuccino? It's not too strong. Good idea, thanks. I'll get that. What about you? I think I'll just have a regular coffee, black. Later, after they receive their coffees, so, how's work going? Busy, as usual. But it's good. What about you? Still enjoying your new job? Yes, definitely. There's a lot to learn, but everyone is so nice. That's great to hear. So, anything exciting happening in your life? Well, I'm planning a trip to Italy next month. Are you going anywhere interesting this summer? I might go hiking in the Pyrenees. I haven't decided yet. Oh, that sounds lovely. We should chat more often. It feels like forever since we last talked. I agree. This has been nice. Maybe we can do this again next week? Definitely. 2. Attending social events. This could be anything from work functions and industry conferences to charity galas and weddings. 2. Friends, Sarah and David, are having lunch together. Hey David, so have you decided what you're wearing to the charity gala this weekend? Not yet. It's always a challenge picking out an outfit for these things. I don't want to be too overdressed, but I also don't want to look too casual. Tell me about it. They said it's a black tie optional event, right? Maybe a nice dress shirt and slacks for you? Yeah, that could work. What about you? Are you going all out with a gown? Maybe not a full gown, but definitely something a little dressier. I found a nice cocktail dress that's both elegant and comfortable. It's important to feel good in what you wear, right? Absolutely. Are you excited about the event? Yes and no. It's always good to support a good cause and I hear the guest speaker is really interesting. But these big gatherings can get a bit overwhelming sometimes. I know what you mean. But hey, at least we'll be there together. Maybe we can grab a drink beforehand and chat a bit to loosen up. Great idea. And who knows, maybe we'll even meet some new people. It can be a good chance to network outside our usual circles. True. Plus, they said there's going to be a silent auction with some amazing items. 
I might just have to break the bank on something. Just don't get carried away. But seriously, it should be a fun night. We can mingle, support a good cause, and maybe even win a prize. Sounds good to me. Looking forward to it. 3. Hosting gatherings. Throwing a party, potluck, or game night at your place is a great way to connect with friends and family in a more intimate setting. Alex. The host and Emma, his friend, are meeting at Alex's living room in the evening. Hey, Emma. Welcome to my place. I'm so glad you could make it. Thanks, Alex. Your apartment looks cozy. What's the occasion? Well, I thought it would be fun to have a game night. You know, a chance to relax, play some games, and catch up with friends. Plus, it's a great way to connect in a more intimate setting. I love that idea. What games do you have planned? I've got a mix of board games, card games, and even a trivia quiz. But first, let's grab some snacks from the kitchen. I've got chips, popcorn, and some homemade cookies. Yum! And what about drinks? I've got a variety, sodas, sparkling water, and a few beers. Feel free to help yourself. Awesome. So, how do we decide which game to play? Good question. I've set up a game sign-up sheet. Everyone can choose a game category appetizers, main dishes, salads, side dishes, desserts, or beverages. That way, we'll have a diverse menu. No one wants six pasta salads and six trays of brownies, right? Definitely not. And I see you've got serving utensils ready. Smart move. Thanks. Communication is key. I sent out a group text to remind everyone about their assignments. Oh, and I've encouraged guests to bring their favorite games too. That way, we'll discover new ones. Perfect. And how long should each game last? I've chosen shorter games, so people can switch tables and play different ones. Monopoly is fun, but it takes forever. Let's keep it casual and adaptable. Agreed. And what about seating? I've set up tables and chairs in the living room. Plenty of space for everyone. Plus, I've got some background music playing to set the mood. You've thought of everything. I'm excited. Let's get this game night started. 4. Going out for dinner. Enjoying a meal together at a restaurant is a classic way to socialize and catch up. Alex and Emma are planning to meet up for dinner. They haven't seen each other in a while. Hi Alex. How are you doing? Hey Emma. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. How about you? It's been a while. I'm good, just a bit busy lately. It feels like forever since we last caught up. We should grab dinner sometime soon. Absolutely. I miss our chats. Are you free on Friday evening? Hmm, Friday might be tricky. Let me check my schedule. Actually, I have a free slot around 7.30 p.m. Does that work for you? Perfect. 
7.30 p.m. on Friday sounds great. Where would you like to go? Well, I'm open to suggestions. What kind of food are you in the mood for? Honestly, I'm flexible. Italian, Thai, Mexican, I'm happy with most things. Maybe something new? Ooh, I did hear about a new Vietnamese restaurant that just opened up downtown. They have amazing reviews for their fresh spring rolls and pho. Are you adventurous enough to try it? Definitely. I love trying new cuisines. Vietnamese sounds delicious. Let's try it then. Great. I'll make a reservation online. Have you been to this part of downtown lately? There's a new art gallery and a cute little bookstore that just opened up too. No, I haven't been there in a while. Maybe after dinner we can take a stroll and check out the new places? Sounds like a plan. It'll be a fun evening catching up and exploring a new area. Exactly. I can't wait to hear about what you've been up to lately. Me too. I have a lot to tell you. Friday evening arrives, and Alex and Emma meet at the Vietnamese restaurant. Wow, this place looks really nice. Great job with the reservation. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. The atmosphere seems really welcoming. Hello, welcome to Saigon Delights. May I seat you? Yes, please. We have a reservation under the name Emma. Certainly. Follow me. This table by the window will be perfect for you too. Can I offer you some water to start? Yes, please, that would be great. The waiter hands them menus and gives them a few minutes to browse. This menu looks amazing. So many delicious options. I can't decide. I know, right? I'm leaning towards the lemongrass chicken, but the beef pho is tempting too. Why don't we share a plate of spring rolls to start? and then each get a main course. We can always try each other's food. Perfect idea. I'll have the lemongrass chicken then. They order their food and enjoy some conversation while they wait. So, tell me all about what you've been up to lately. Well, you know I finally finished that online design course I was telling you about. Oh yeah. How was it? It was challenging, but I learned so much. I feel a lot more confident in my design skills now. That's fantastic. I knew you'd do great. The waiter brings their food and they take a moment to admire the presentation. Wow, this looks amazing. It smells delicious too. It does, doesn't it? Let's dig in. They enjoy their meal, taking bites and sharing stories in between. Mmm, this is so good. The flavors are incredible. Slow down, enjoy it. Yes, you're right, it is delicious. I love the fresh herbs. After dinner, they finish their drinks and chat for a while longer. This was a great evening, Alex. 5. Celebrating special occasions, birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, and holidays are all great reasons to get together with loved ones. The scene of this conversation is between two friends, Sarah and Maria. They are chatting about how they celebrate special occasions with their families, Maria describes her recent family gathering for her grandma's 80th birthday.
How was your weekend? It was great, Sarah. We had a big family celebration on Saturday. Oh, really? What was the occasion? It was my grandma's birthday. She turned 80 this year. Wow, 80 years old. That's a big milestone. How did you celebrate? We had a big party at my aunt's house. The whole family came, even my cousins from out of town. There was a lot of delicious food, cake of course, and even some live music. That sounds lovely. Did your grandma enjoy it? Oh, absolutely. She was so happy to see everyone. We sang her favorite songs, danced a little, and just spent time together catching up. It was a really special day. That's wonderful, Maria. Family celebrations are always so much fun. Speaking of celebrations, what are your plans for the upcoming holidays? Well, for Easter, we usually have a small gathering at my place. We dye eggs together, have a nice brunch, and maybe watch an Easter movie. It's a pretty low-key celebration. Sounds relaxing. How about bigger holidays like Christmas or New Year's? For Christmas, we go all out. We decorate the house, put up a Christmas tree, and exchange gifts. We also have a big Christmas Eve dinner with all the traditional dishes, like roast turkey and mashed potatoes. It's a lot of work, but it's a tradition we all cherish. That sounds delicious. What about New Year's? For New Year's, we usually have a party with some friends. We play games, watch the fireworks on TV, and make resolutions for the new year. It's a fun way to ring in the new year with good company. Those all sound like great traditions. Do you celebrate any other holidays besides the Christian ones? Actually, yes. My family is originally from Mexico, so we also celebrate Cinco de Mayo. We make traditional Mexican food, listen to mariachi music, and maybe even learn a new dance. That's so interesting. I never knew you celebrated Cinco de Mayo. It's not a huge celebration, but it's a way to connect with our heritage and traditions. Do you have any special celebrations in your family? Well, my birthday is coming up next month, so we'll probably have a small dinner with close friends. But the biggest celebration in my family is actually Thanksgiving. We get together with all my extended family and have a huge feast with turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and all the trimmings. It's a lot of food, but it's a time to be thankful for everything we have. Thanksgiving sounds wonderful. It's always nice to have a reason to get together with loved ones and show them how much you appreciate them. Absolutely. Celebrations are a great way to create happy memories and strengthen family bonds. Maybe we can even celebrate something together sometime. I'd love that, Sarah. We could do a potluck dinner or watch a movie marathon. Sounds like a plan. Let's keep in touch and figure something out. 6. Joining a club or group. This is a fantastic way to meet people who share your interests. There are clubs and groups for just about everything. Omar and Nadia are classmates studying English. They are chatting during their break. Nadia, hey! How was your weekend? Hi Omar, it was good, thanks for asking. A little quiet, though. I stayed in and watched some movies. Movies, who? 
What kind? Maybe we can recommend some to each other sometime. That's a great idea. I watched a couple of comedies, actually. Cool. I saw a new action movie with my brother. It was pretty exciting. Hmm, action movies aren't really my thing, but listen. I was thinking about joining a club or group for something outside of school. A club? That sounds interesting. What kind of club are you thinking of? Well, I'm not sure yet. There are so many options. I like cooking, reading, and maybe even doing some volunteer work. Wow, you have a lot of interests. There are definitely clubs for all of those things. Yeah, I know. But I don't know where to even start looking. Actually, there are a few ways you can find a club. Have you tried searching online? Online? Like, social media or something? Sure, social media groups can be a good option. But there are also websites dedicated to finding clubs and groups in your area. You just put in your interests and location, and it shows you all the possibilities. Oh, that sounds easy enough. I'll definitely check that out. Great! The other option is to look for flyers or posters at school or community centers. Sometimes they have information about local clubs. Flyers, huh? I haven't thought about that. I'll keep an eye out next time I'm at the library. Perfect! So, what kind of cooking are you interested in? Maybe I can help you narrow down the club options. Well, I love trying new cuisines from different countries. I also like baking desserts. Ooh, me too. There might be a club specifically for international cuisine, or maybe a general cooking club where you can learn all sorts of things. As for baking, there could be a baking club or even a local bakery that offers classes. A baking class. That could be fun. I've always wanted to learn how to make perfect croissants. Croissants? Now you're talking my language. Those are delicious. See? Joining a club could be a great way to meet people who share your love for food. Absolutely. And it wouldn't just be about food, you'd also get to practice your English with people who are learning just like you. That's true. I get a little nervous speaking English outside of class sometimes. Maybe a club setting would be less intimidating. Exactly. Everyone there would be focused on the activity, not judging each other's English. It's a great way to gain confidence. You're making me even more excited about finding a club. Do you belong to any clubs yourself, Omar? Actually, I'm thinking about joining a photography club. I've been getting really interested in taking pictures lately. Wow, that's cool. Maybe we can share photos with each other sometime. Sure. So, let me know what kind of club you decide to join, Nadia. Maybe we can even go check one out together. Thanks, Omar. That would be great. I have a feeling this is going to be a fun way to improve my English and meet new people. 7. Volunteering. Volunteering your time to a cause you care about is a rewarding way to meet new people who share your values. In the following situation Omar and Amira, two friends discuss about the different possibilities for volunteering. Hey 
Hey Omar, have you seen the flyers for the new club starting at the community center? Oh, the ones by the entrance. No, I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. What kind of clubs are there? There are so many. There's a photography club, a book club, a yoga class, even a bird watching group. Wow, that's a lot of variety. Maybe there's something for everyone. Exactly. I was thinking about joining the book club. I love reading, but sometimes I don't have anyone to discuss the books with. That's a great idea. Do you know what kind of books they'll be reading? The flyers said they are starting with some classic novels, like Pride and Prejudice. Oh, I've heard of that one. Isn't it a love story? Yeah, I think so. Have you read it? No, not yet. Maybe if I join the club, I can finally read it and understand it better. That would be fun. We could practice talking about the book together in English too. Speaking of practicing English, did you see the flyer for the conversation exchange? The conversation exchange. What's that? It says it's for people who want to practice speaking English with native speakers. We could meet up with someone who wants to learn Arabic, and then we can take turns talking in each other's languages. Oh, that's interesting. I've always been a little shy about speaking English with native speakers, but maybe this would be a good way to practice in a comfortable setting. Yeah, exactly. We could start by talking about simple things, like our hobbies or our weekends. That sounds good. Maybe we could even join the conversation exchange together for moral support. Great idea. It would be more fun to do it with a friend anyway. Do you think there are any other clubs we might be interested in? Well, I know you're really into photography. There's that photography club I mentioned earlier. Hmm, that is tempting. I would love to learn some new photography skills and meet other people who share my passion. But I'm not sure if I'm good enough yet. Don't worry, Omar. The flyer said the club is for all levels, from beginners to professionals. They can probably give you some great tips, no matter your skill level. You're right. Maybe I should just go for it. Besides, it would be a good chance to practice talking about photography in English. See. Joining a club has so many benefits. You can meet new people, learn new things, and improve your English all at the same time. You're absolutely right, Amira. Thanks for reminding me of that. Maybe we can check out the clubs together this weekend and see which ones we like best. Sounds like a plan. I'm free on Saturday afternoon. How about you? Saturday works for me too. Let's meet at the community center around 2 p.m. Perfect. See you then. 8. Taking a class. Learning a new skill can be a fun way to meet people with similar interests. Here's a dialogue between two friends, Emma and Alex, who are discussing their experiences with taking classes. Hey, Alex. I've been thinking about taking a class lately. You know, learning a new skill can be so rewarding. Absolutely, Emma. It's a great way to expand our horizons and meet interesting people. What kind of class are you considering? Well, I've always wanted to learn how to play the guitar. I think it would be fun, and who knows? 
Maybe I'll meet other music enthusiasts. That's a fantastic idea. I took a photography class last year, and it was amazing. Not only did I learn about composition and lighting, but I also made some lifelong friends. Really? Tell me more. How did you meet people in your photography class? Well, during the first session, we all introduced ourselves and shared why we were interested in photography. It turned out that most of us were beginners, just like me. We practiced taking photos together, critiqued each other's work, and even went on photo walks around the city. Sounds like a lot of fun. Did you have any favorite moments? Oh, definitely. There was this one time when we visited a local park to capture the sunset. We were all so excited, setting up our tripods and adjusting our camera settings. And you know what? We ended up having a mini picnic afterward, sharing stories and laughing. It felt like a little photography family. I love that. It's not just about the skill, it's about the connections you make. I'm convinced I'm signing up for that guitar class. Awesome. And you'll see, Emma, taking a class is not just about learning, it's about building a community. Plus, you'll have a blast strumming those chords and maybe even writing your own songs. Thanks for the encouragement, Alex. I can't wait to meet fellow guitar enthusiasts. Maybe we'll even form a band. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. And remember, learning together creates a unique bond. So, go ahead and strum those strings you're going to rock it. 9. Going to the gym or participating in a fitness class? Working out together is a great way to bond with friends and stay healthy. The next situation is a fun workout session with friends at the local gym, with the three following characters, Emma, a fitness enthusiast, Alex, Emma's friend who is new to exercising, the trainer, the gym instructor. Hey, Alex. I'm so glad you decided to join me at the gym today. Working out together is much more fun. Thanks, Emma. I've never been to a gym before, so I'm a bit nervous. No worries. The first step is always the hardest. Let's start with some warm-up exercises. Follow me. Warm-up exercises, 10 minutes. Jogging in place. Okay, Alex, let's jog in place. Lift your knees and swing your arms. It gets your heart rate up. Got it. Like this? Perfect. Keep it up. Arm circles. Now, let's do arm circles. Extend your arms and make small circles forward. Like this? Yes. And now reverse the direction. Great warm up, everyone. Now let's move on to strength training. Strength training, 20 minutes. Squats. Squats are excellent for your legs and glutes. Feet shoulder width apart, bend your knees, and lower your body. Alex, try this. Keep your back straight. Like this? Perfect. You're a natural. Push-ups. Push-ups work your chest and arms. Start on your knees if needed. I'll try. Down and up, right? Exactly. You're doing great. Alex, meet my friend Sarah. She's also a regular here. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the gym. Emma's right working out with friends makes it more enjoyable. 
Thanks, Sarah. I'm starting to feel more comfortable. Cardio workout, 15 minutes. Stationary bike. Hop on the stationary bike. Adjust the resistance and pedal. Emma, how fast should I go? Start slow and increase gradually. You'll find your rhythm. Cool down and stretching, 10 minutes. Hamstring stretch. Extend one leg forward and lean gently. Feel the stretch in your hamstring. Like this? Perfect. Switch legs. Shoulder stretch. Reach one arm across your chest. Hold for 15 seconds. I can feel it. This is relaxing. Alex, great job. You survived your first gym session. How do you feel? Tired but happy. And I'm glad I came with you both. 10. Going to a concert, sporting event, or play. Sharing a cultural experience is a fun way to socialize. The situation, a memorable night at the concert. The scene is outside the concert venue, with three characters, Sophie, a music enthusiast, Liam, Sophie's friend who is new to live events and Ella, the concert organizer. Hey, Liam. I'm thrilled you're joining me tonight. Concerts are my favorite way to unwind and connect with others. Thanks, Sophie. I've never been to a live event before. What should I expect? Don't worry. It's all about having fun. Let's go inside and meet Ella, the concert organizer. Welcome, Sophie and Liam. Tonight's concert features a local indie band. They are fantastic. Grab your wristbands and enjoy the show. Inside the venue. Liam, look at the stage. The lights, the instruments, it's magical. And see the crowd? People from all walks of life, sharing this experience. Wow, it's electric. I feel the energy. Is it always like this? Absolutely. Music brings us together. Let's find a spot near the stage. During the concert. Liam, listen to the lead singer's voice. It's like a warm hug. And the beat? It's impossible not to sway. I get it now. This is incredible. Everyone singing along. I feel part of something bigger. Intermission. Liam, let's grab some snacks. Concerts are also about food trucks and chatting with fellow fans. Good idea. I'll get nachos. And look, there's a group playing trivia. Let's join. Trivia time. Welcome, everyone. Who can name the band's first album? Liam, it's Midnight Echoes. Trust me. Sophie, you're a concert guru. Midnight Echoes it is. Back to the music. Liam, the encore is starting. Brace yourself, it's epic. I'm ready. The whole crowd is on their feet. This is unforgettable. After the concert. Liam, how was it? Sophie, I'm speechless. The music, the people, I've never felt so alive. That's the magic of live events. We shared this cultural experience, and it'll stay with us forever.